Look who showed up. Look who made it. Yeah, you know that feeling, don't you? Do you remember? <laughs> that expression is so great. Do you remember the feeling? Hitting a ball with your palm, how good it felt? I thought he was super strong, internally. But he's really just a sweetheart. He's like a soft-hearted, gentle sweetheart. So this goes back. Time to avenge your senpai. Nope. They don't care. They don't care. It's all good. Shoulder pat. Such a bro response. Exactly. Ooh, just digging in here. He's telling him what he needs to hear, though. Damn, no sugarcoating it at all. Look at the hand again. <laughs> Look at your hand. Remember the feeling of greatness. His palm tells a story. It's his history of the time when he wasn't a wimp. I think it's possible to read the, the captain's words there as a little bit harsh, but I don't know. Personally, I love it, and I think part of the reason why it resonates with me is because it wasn't really an attack. I mean, he's saying it with love. In some level, it's probably what he's waiting to hear. He's constructed this whole narrative in his head about how he can't do it, and he's let everyone down. It's one of those things where a story can take hold in your in your head, and it just spirals deeper and deeper, and it goes farther and farther away from reality, which is that, you know, it's probably fine. People probably want for you for you to be okay and do your best. Episode 9, a toss to the ace. I don't think I realized at first that this guy that he was trying to recruit last episode was the same guy feeding them sausages, etc. I think it's him, right? I'm lurking. I promised the team a coach. I have sacrificed a lot, like grading my students' papers, you know, my actual job for this volleyball team. <laughs> Everybody's sacrificing, putting their lives on the line here. No job, no studying, no girls, just glory, the glory of volleyball, as it should be. A lot of these stories are sort of running along the same vein, you know, like they want to return, but they all got their hang-ups about it. Ooh, okay, I, I think I can predict why. Sometimes things are just too good. Yes, I, ex I understand exactly what he means. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But there's a, way, there's a way to manage that. I understand this. I'm sorry, I know I talk about Korea endlessly, but it's just such a big, impactful thing in my life. When I left Korea the first time after living here two and a half years, I left at sort of a peak of my enjoyment here and experience. Like, things were just going so well. Everything felt like it was on easy mode. It was one of the most fun periods of my life to this day. It's going to sound crazy to say, but one of the reasons why I left was because it was almost too good. And I felt like, one, I couldn't enjoy it any more than I was enjoying it at that time. And also, I definitely would try to keep enjoying it that way. And I wanted to kind of force myself into a new environment or a new situation so that it would push me to grow and try new things. I was worried that I would continue along the path of just having a great time and then I would wake up 10 or 15 years later not having really explored myself any further because you sort of hit plateaus, you know, you enter a new environment. Any new environment, especially a challenging one, is, is going to stretch you out in, in really cool ways that develop you. But there's sort of a diminishing marginal return where with each passing day or each passing experience, you're getting less and less out of it. And I wanted to like start that again, start the process again with something new and great that would push me in new ways. And on some level, after I left, I was afraid to come back because part of my self-identity, part of things I was proud of in my life came from that success and came from that great experience. And I was worried if I ever came back, it might undo some of that. It might undo some of the cornerstones of my self-identity. Now, the interesting thing about that is I'm back now. And actually, a lot of my instincts were correct. Like, even though my Korean has gotten a lot better, I'm actually finding it a lot more challenging to get what I need out of life here. Not that it isn't so great. It's great and it's fun. But it, one, doesn't have the same dynamism that it did when I was here the first time. I'm also not as satisfied with doing the same things just because I already kind of did them. And I'm trying to reach a little bit higher in what I do here, which comes with its own new challenges. So it's sort of like I'm starting over in a way. The thing is, I think, while there are certain pitfalls having come back for sure, I think it's it's an opportunity in a new way because if it was that fragile, you know, if the things I had built were so fragile that coming back would undo them, then it's probably something I needn't rest on for my personal identity. I think that the key and the answer for him is to let that time be its own time. You know, that's just, it is what it is. Those memories are intact. I think ultimately the, the bigger determiner of how useful something will be is not really the, the specifics of the location or activity or whatever it is, but the goals you set and how high you're trying to reach and what you're actually targeting and how honest you are with where you are in it and how honest you are with where you want to go and, you know, trying to match the challenges that you are called for. In relation to this, what I'm saying is he can have both. Yeah, it might be a little bit challenging, 
for him to go back, but he's not going back as the same person. And at the end of the day, don't you want to be the kind of person who grabs a challenge that is appealing rather than hide in a kind of comfort that on some level is sort of unsatisfying and ignores your inner calling? There it is, there's a new challenge. Greater heights. We're going for a championship this time. This guy is secretly engineering this whole thing, piece by piece, well played. Interesting. Volleyball enemies meet again as coach enemies. Oh yeah, seems like they're friendly too. <laughs> That's exactly what he's trying to do, and it's working. He's not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Yes, <laughs> you will. <laughs> He's in. They all have their individual skills that they're working on, aiming for. Because he spends half the time on the floor, puts his body on the line. Coach is here! This is a big day. Why do they call him Okai Kun? Right, right, he's the one feeding them sausages. And they had no idea, huh? Oh, huh, we got a game before the game. It's interesting because I thought the captain was so powerful as a leader, I didn't even think about the fact that they didn't have a coach. Whip him into shape, coach. No more excuses. Are these all senpai? Interesting. The guy on the right's giving me Ida vibes. These are such an easy group to coach, though. He made it. <laughs> chop, chop, Asahi Kun san, whatever. Once you cross that line, <laughs> he's in. <laughs> the Shinoya's happy. Sugawara is so nice. Always willing to sacrifice himself to a fault. Too much pressure for him? Yeah, that's his journey though, that's very clear. He's very honest for a practice session. Yeah, I mean that's fine. It's also not the worst thing to be a su supportive, you know, be a support player. There's beauty in that too. Just as long as it's not an obstacle to his growth. Playing against the adults. When I was teaching at the high school in China, there was an annual faculty student basketball game. And the students were obviously younger than us, more fit than us, practice basketball more often than us. But as a teacher, you have this thing that's like, you just can't lose because there's there's more at stake than the game. It's, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's a really interesting dynamic too, because suddenly you're on an even playing field. You know, there's no authority, it's just points. You'd think it would just be a fun game and everybody would be a good sport about it. But it always ended up being pretty heated and physical. Like I fractured a rib during a game from a, a wayward student elbow. I wouldn't count out this older team. She's gonna nail it, of course. She got it. There it is. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, they also got experience. Just manliness. I do get that, like, some people play better, you know, when they feel they're supported. They can rally to the feeling of leadership. Yeah. It's admirable because he has a, a lot of natural anxiety, but still shows up. Yeah, we'll do something about it. That's our secret weapon this season. There we go, somebody recognizing Hinata. <laughs> oh yeah, this is Coach's first time witnessing it. You gotta work hard if you want to stay the ace, Asahi. But of course, it's all a win-win for them because they're on the same team. They can push each other to be better. Got trauma. Got yeah, big time trauma. It's gonna make it extra satisfying when they win the championship. Stop. Stop not to, not to spiral in these situations. Doesn't take that many failures. And they all rely on him, which makes it so much worse. This mop anger. 
どうせ決めらんねえよ撃ってみなきゃわかんねえだろうがスパイクが決まんなくたって攻めるつもりなんかみじんもねえ勝手に諦めんのは許さねえよ Damn, I mean, I feel like at the heart of it, a lot of the frustration is the fact that they love him so much. He seems like, in some sense, he was the not just the scoring cornerstone of their team, but the cornerstone of a lot of their hope and faith in their ability to win. It's a huge symbolic defeat if he gives up. And while Asahi's reaction is understandable because, you know, you, you take that many rejections, it's hard not to read into it more than is necessary. It's especially common for people who are very conscientious or are introspective thinkers to take more responsibility than is due. But I think Noshinoya is right because it's possible that other team is just better than them, right? It's possible that They just took a loss. That's fine. The second that he thinks it's something pervasive to him that will carry into perpetuity like some kind of curse that he can't shake, he's lost not just this game, but every game until he figures that out. There's a really healthy place for reflection and self criticism. It crosses into dangerous territory when it becomes something that is no longer based on reality or is just way too over extrapolated, you know, rather than seeing something as a potential setback or a temporary failure or a temporary set of failures to just see it as like an impossibility and like the, the fear of coming against that again and the fear of grinding it out and figuring out what's wrong and working through it can be so terrifying that it can be paralyzing. <laughs> It just hurt too bad. Yeah, he just overread it. Go away, we're talking about volleyball. Screw your rules. His hairpiece is barely hanging on. Hinata is his perfect symbol of what he used to be. There you go. It's just so much more satisfying. It just feels so much, so much better to hear it put that way. I mean, you succumb to that kind of pain and you... In essence, you defeat yourself. It's a big moment for Asahi. He just needs just one. <laughs> they look terrified, though. Let's get that feeling back. Oh no! Give it a second chance. We got this. We got support. There it is. Why are you guys surprised? <laughs> second chance. <laughs> So not such a fanboy. It's such a big episode for so many people simultaneously. Just give it to him. Just keep going until he gets one. <laughs> the other team too. Some great perspective too, given that they're all on the same team. Give it to him anyway. I'm getting some real My Hair Academia vibes from this even though it's volleyball. <laughs> he called for it, all right. So much has happened in the half second it would take for the ball to <laughs> fall to earth. I mean, sometimes you gotta learn the same lesson multiple times. It's fine. It's just life. <laughs> oh, got a special animation for that. Oh, it went through- what the hell? Just went through their hands. The block just didn't even matter. Yes. And just like that, he was cured. <laughs> Doesn't take much, just takes a little bit of momentum. I think for a lot of the characters, their anxiety comes from the fact that they just want it really badly. This is better. It, like, wanting it this badly so that it causes you intense pain. And suffering with failure is just way better than the game Asai was playing before. Just pretending he didn't want it. That hurts. That's not easy. I mean, it seems easier at first glance. I think that's the instinct that is easy to have in this situation, just to avoid the pain of growth and struggle. Because everyone's going to hit plateaus and everyone's going to hit difficulties. There's an allure of sour grapes, you know, pretending you don't actually want it. Because you, on some level, know what it'll take to get past it. But just from experience, I can say that's just a, that's a much more cutting pain. It's a dull ache that just doesn't go away. Better to just struggle through it. They're all doing that to some level. You know, they all have their own obstacles, their personal demons. Some of them are physical. Some of them are talent-based. Some of them are emotional. I really think that an underrated skill, or maybe just not often talked about skill, it's not so much ability, but how much someone can put up with discomfort. Aiming for a big goal that has no guarantee of success means living in this really weird territory where you could be doing all of it for nothing. 
I mean, you could do all of it and fail, like forever. And you definitely will fail at certain points. And that's gonna come with embarrassment, and not just embarrassment in front of others. In fact, that's mostly just imagined. The real embarrassment is towards yourself, because if you believe you want something and you wanna believe you're capable and you wanna believe you're, you're solid and decent or whatever, to watch yourself fail repeatedly at something is, is tough to stomach. But I would argue is really important to stomach, just because the closer you get to the truth, the better you can navigate. And hiding from the pain of growth doesn't magically make you good at whatever it is you want to do or doesn't accomplish your dreams at all. To me, it seems like, and this might be a little bit too strong of a word for it, but it's a delusion because this episode is its own self-contained story and there's got to be development. He makes it at the end. You know, he's able to spike the second time and do it with such force that it breaks through their hands. If he hadn't succeeded, it wouldn't be any different. I mean, I think it would still be more satisfying if he kept going at it and going at it and calling for spikes, especially in practice, until he got it. That's a way, way, way more satisfying trajectory and outcome for the character than it would be if he just sat on the sidelines for the rest of his life and never played volleyball again. Maybe it's obvious in the show, but I feel like it's such a, a deeply common thing, having a, a dream internally or, you know, secretly coveting something that I would argue probably means there's something in it for the person besides just the outcome. It, it's like a call for growth. It's an area of weakness that needs to be explored. Facing something head on, assuming it's the right challenge and actually is productive and actually is what people want. It's just so much greater. It's just so much more fulfilling to experience.